if you want to improve your retouching skills inside Photoshop, then this video is for you. In this video, I am going to show you how to retouch and color grade this image from this look to this look professionally inside Photoshop in less than no time. Let's get started. Now, before we begin guys, one request from me is that if you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing and liking this video. Once you hit the like button and subscribe, YouTube is going to help us recommend this video to other people. Thank you and let's begin. Now, the image looks good. There is no need for me to use the spot healing brush tool to remove the dark spot because they are not there in the first place. I will go to the layers panel here and press Ctrl plus J twice to add two copies of the background. I will hide the original copy and rename this one to color. Then I will rename this one to texture. What does this mean, color and texture? Let's zoom into the image. As I zoom to this portion, you see these bones. These bones are called the textures, okay? And we also have a clear color of her skin tone. Now, what I want to be left on this layer alone is just the color and not the bones. To do that, let us hide the texture layer. Let's go to filter and then let's add Gaussian blur to it. I'll click on this button to zoom out. Or I can click on this button to zoom in. I'll zoom to our forehead right here. Now, by default, this radius is actually 1. Depending on your image, you will need to play with this radius to determine the value that will enter here. But the rule is that simply drag the radius to the right until you even out the skin tones here. Make sure the bumps are no more visible. Okay? So, while I was trying to test this image out, I came up with a value of 7.5. I'll just input 7.5 to have this even colors here and click OK. Now on the color layer, we have clear all the textures. Let's enable the texture layer. You can see that the bombs are still there. With the texture layer selected, let us go to image and then let's choose apply image. Let's click on layer and choose color. The reason we are choosing color is because color is below the texture layer and want to subtract every color from the textures. Now let's change the blending mode from multiply to subtract. Make sure the scale and offset are set to 2 and 138 respectively. Opacity is set to 100% and again, this trick is for an image that is 8-bit. If your image is 16-bit, then you can check my other video on frequency separation. With all these settings, I'll just click OK. Now, on the texture layer, we have retained just the textures or the bones, as you can see here. And on the color layer, we retain just the colors and not the texture, which is very important. Now select the texture layer and change its blending mode from normal to linear light. Then shift click here to select these two layers. Then click on the folder icon here to put them inside the group. I'll rename it to color slash texture. And let's enable the original background. To make sure we did the whole process correctly, let us compare. This is the before and this is the after. Nothing has changed, which means the process is okay. Now open this group and select the color layer. That's very important. Then go to the toolbar and grab the mixer brush tool. Make sure this button is not turned on. If it is turned on, it will automatically fill any foreground color which you have. Click here to turn it off. Then make sure the second button here is turned on. Set the weight of the brush to 8%, load to 75. Set the mix to 90% and a flow of 100%. Now, some people also prefer to leave the texture layer turned off. But in my case, I'm just going to leave it turned on as this allows me to see the highlights and the shadows better. Now I'll just zoom into the image. And then one last thing you need to note before we paint is the manner in which you paint. What you don't want to do is to paint, for example, this portion with these bright colors and move the brush while painting to this portion with darker shade of this color. So you want to make sure that you paint those portions with the same color together and also paint this type of portions together. Don't mix them. I'll increase the size of my brush and then gradually begin to paint here to even out the colors as you can see.
Let us compare the before and after. This is the before and this is the after. It looks better right now. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is to create a stand visible layer of everything I've done on top. To do that, press Ctrl Alt Shift E at once. That is going to create a stand visible layer here. I'll just rename it to grading. Then I'll hide everything here. Although we have successfully even out the skin tones, the image still look flat. Let us start by boosting the highlights and shadows. To do that, I'll click on the new adjustment layer icon here and choose labels. The gradient bar at the bottom here simply determines whether the image is totally black or totally white. If you click from the shadow portion here towards the right, you make the image totally white like so. And similarly, if you click from the right and take it to the left, you make the image totally black. Let's reset it by clicking on this button. Now, come to the highlight portion here and simply drag it to the left. I think 181 for highlight is okay. And then let's clip it to make sure it affects just the layer with the grating. This is the before and this is the after. Now let's click on the new adjustment layer icon and choose gradient map. Let's click here to clip it. Let's click on the method and choose perceptual. Let's minimize the panel for now. Then let's change its blending mode from normal to soft light. The gradient map will help to boost the contrast of the image. Now let's reduce its opacity to 61% to have this effect. As you can see on the gradient map layer, the max is currently selected. Make sure the button in front here is selected. Then go to the properties panel to assess its properties. Click on this gradient bar to bring the gradient editor. These color stops at the bottom here simply controls these portions which are darker or the shadows and the lightest portions on the image. You can select the stop and change its color or even move to the image as sample and existing color from here. Now those portions which were currently with the shadows have sampled this other new color which we click on. I just wanted to show you that is possible but let's click cancel. What I want to do is to add a soft glow effect to the whole image. So I'll click here then click on color. Then I'll simply pick any color of my choice by hovering here. Now I think I like this color and if you want to have the exact color as me you can just copy this code here this color code. Then I'll just click OK. Click OK again and then minimize the panel. Now the glow that we have added is working so far but it is affecting everything on the image. To selectively paint the glow, let us select the maps and then let us invert it by pressing Ctrl plus I. That's Command I on the back. This sends the image back the way it was. Then this time go to the toolbar and take a soft round brush And I'll set the opacity and flow to 100%. Now, the max is currently set to black because we inverted it. And our foreground is also black, which means if we paint right now, nothing will happen. So, let us press the X key to swap the foreground and background color. Now, our foreground is white, which means if we paint on black, it is going to reveal the details below it. The details with the glow effect which we want. Now, I'll take some time to selectively paint on the image to add the glow effect to the portions I took unnecessary. As you can see, the glow is extending towards the portions with the hair, but I don't want that. To easily fix these portions, let us make sure the foreground is set to black by pressing the X key. Now I will reduce the size of the brush, zoom into those portions and gradually begin to paint to get rid of these colors here. Now, 
if you need to adjust the levels adjustment you can simply double click on the thumbnail in front here and maybe we increase the highlight ever so slightly like so 178 looks good to me now i'll select the topmost layer here hold the shift key and click here then simply click on the folder icon here to put those inside one group i'll rename it to final and let's compare the image with the way it was from the beginning this is the original image here the before and this is the after so much difference now you can go ahead and continue adding some highlights here and there with the curves adjustment but i think right now you understand my point this is how you can easily retouch a photo and color grade it to make it pop thank you so much for watching the video to the end I hope you find this video interesting. If you want to support our channel by making YouTube recommend this video to other people, support our channel by subscribing and giving us a like. Thank you and I'm going to see you in the next one tomorrow. Bye-bye.